this week's webinar. My name is Qasem Al Rafi, and I will be the presenter for today. Uh, this is a new series we'll be doing, which is CRM Navigation 101. And to start off the series, we'll beginning we'll, we will be beginning with Advanced Find. Uh, so over the course of the webinar today, we will talk about how to filter on the core record, which would be the forms entity, how to filter some related records, and then how to edit columns for you to export the results to Excel. And then we'll actually get into a bit of reports and how you can use the iTrack portal to view some of the uh, reports you've created with Advanced Find. So without further ado. So once we open up our CRM environment, we want to navigate on the top bar all the way to this little funnel icon where it says Advanced Find. And this will open up a, uh, a little pop-up window in which we can search for any entity in our CRM environment. So we're going to scroll down in the look for area to the forms entity, which is what we'll be searching on today. And once we open that, we're going to show you an example of what we're doing, which is we want to see which forms were created by Kathleen Morafi or any forms that were created on this year. And related, we want to see uh, which forms can, which form cause analysis items contain data. And then on the top bar here, we have, we can view the saved views that we have. So whether it's your, you know, active saved views, which is a webinar view, or some of the other views that might be in the system already by using the saved view drop down on the right hand side. And every time you open a saved view, not only will the queries change, but also the columns that are associated to the queries will change as well. So on this little top ribbon here, if you click the edit columns button, we see here the columns that we will be seeing with the results of the advanced find will be form number, form type, occurred date, due date, form status, and more. And if we ever want to sort by a specific record or a specific column, we can just highlight the column, head down to configure sorting, and then we can say, you know, sort by form number descending, and then sort by form type ascending. Now let's say we don't see a column that we want to add to the report. We'll hit add columns over here, which will open the record type form and the related records as well. And if you scroll down to any uh, column you want to add, for example, I want to add which employee was related to this result. And I check mark it, hit OK. We see that it adds uh, usually at the end of the column, or if you highlight something, it will add after that highlight. And if you want to move it, you just highlight that column and go right and left, respectively. And if you ever want to remove the column we just added, we hit remove after highlighting it, hit OK, and it is gone from the results. Cool. And the rest of the buttons I'll explain as I go on. So we're going to start with a new query, just nice and fresh. And we're going to start off simple. On this little select drop down here, we see fields, and these are all the fields related to the forms record. Things like employee one, due date, created on, created by, things like that. And the first thing you want to start with is created by. You want to see who created the forms record. You want to go equals. And in this enter value section, I can either type up uh, a unique name. So if there's not, nobody else in the environment that has Kasim ELR after it, and I hit tab, it will auto detect them. And if I remove it, and I click this magnifying glass, I can actually see all the user records that exist within the environments. And then I can just search up here, click this, uh, the check mark, hit select. And if I ever want to remove somebody, I'll just highlight them in this little box down here and hit remove. After that, you'll want to hit add. And if we hit results here, we can see that Casim has created 17 records uh, without any other filters. Next, we want to see uh, you know, when it was created on. And we want to say 
you know, it was created on this. So something to note is that the created by field has different options than the created on field. Just depends on what field you are filtering. So a date field will have different options than a text field and have different options than a number field. And then if you hit results, we can see that I still have 17. So that really didn't change anything. But if I hit this little drop down beside created by, hit select row on both of them. And on the top here, uh, it'll automatically default to group and. So this query is telling it to look for all the forms created by Casim and created on this year. But if I hit group or, and I hit results now, we can see that I currently have 95 records. And if we look at you know the owners, we see that we see Darren, Melik, and other users have actually created these forms as well. So it no longer limits it to being created by Casim. And if you want to remove that selection, you can just click this, change to and, or just delete it. Or sorry, deleting the group will get rid of the two clauses. So what you want to do is you want to ungroup it, and it gets rid of the uh, the group filter. And let's say you wanted to, um, you know, just add a random one, for example. If you want to select these groups and select this row, you can actually go one level deeper and you can just keep going depending on the complexity of the query. Cool. I'll just delete these ones. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to see if the uh, the form we submitted had any cause analysis related to it. So at the end of the uh, end of the fields related to the main entity, we'll see a new section called related. And um, you have to have a bit of understanding of how CRM works to know the differences between some of the regarding or party. But if you go down to just form cause analysis items, the main thing you'll see is that it contains data. So what this means is what form was created by CASIM or it was created on this year and it contains a cause analysis item attached to the form. So if I hit results, we see that it went from 95 to only seven. I go back to advanced find. I want to get even more specific. I can actually go down into the form cause analysis item, hit equals, hit the magnifying glass, and then let's say we want to see, you know, uh, is there an equipment failure? We hit select, we hit add, we hit results. Nothing will show up because that filter is a bit too specific. So you can go pretty deep with advanced find. It's just a matter of understanding what forms are submitted, and you know. Um, you want to make sure you're not getting blank queries. All right. So in the edit column section, I just want to add a couple of columns here. So I'm going to keep title, keep form type. Uh, I'm just going to add created by because that's something that we were searching in the query. And I'm going to search created on. I'll hit OK. And we see here that because I selected form type, they are at the beginning of the query now. If I hit OK, I hit results. We see here that Darren submitted three, Kasim submitted two, Michelle submitted one, and Neosystem support submitted one as well throughout the uh, 2020 year. So it's something to keep note of as well. So once that's done, everything looks dandy up here. We can hit this little save query button. We will give it a name, webinar advanced find, and we'll give it a description of you know, form submitted by Casim or on 2020 must contain cause analysis information. We'll hit save. And then we see here at the use save view that the webinar advanced find uh, saved properly. If I go back to creating a new query and I look at the columns again, we see here that created on and created by actually get deleted. So if we go back to our webinar advanced find and we hit edit columns, we can see that the, the columns actually save with the view as well. Something to note there. Cool. Once that's done, we'll hit results. And um, what you can do here is let's you can select multiple by clicking the check boxes on the left hand side or you can select them all using the checkbox on the top left header. You can activate, deactivate, delete, which we don't recommend deleting any forms in the system. We prefer deactivating. 
if you want these to be assigned to someone else because there was a you know a misuse with the workflow or you feel like uh, the employee didn't put the right person's name you can hit this little edit button which will open up a new pop-up and then you can look at the the records and, and entirely we can scroll down to the header and we can change the owner of the form status as, as a mass edit instead of going one by one however if you only select one form and then you hit edit it will just actually open up the, the entire record in CRM as if you were searching it through forms. So something to note there. Right, we can email the forms to people. We can assign the forms, share. There's a lot you can do here, but the biggest uh, use of advanced find is this export button. So if nothing is selected, we can export the forms as a static worksheet. Or we can uh, export it as a dynamics worksheet which you can use worksheet to import the data back into dynamics later, or you can just select one or two and you can only export the selected records if you don't want all of them. And once that's done, you can manipulate it in Excel however you please. Um, but this is just a good way to filter out everything in the CRM before exporting all the records into Excel and saves you a bit of time there. So that's the general gist of uh, advanced find here. The next thing I want to go into is reports. So I'll just move this over here. If I go into reports, we see that we have a lot of available reports. Now, some of these are out of box uh, eye track specific, some of these are out of box CRM specific. But the one that I really want to get you guys to note is this user summary uh, report. And what this does when you open it, you know, we can just hit run report on the bottom right here. And what it does is it will show every user and you know what what role do they have in society, in the uh, environment. Uh, unfortunately, it's horizontal. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can rotate this. No. So regardless, if I go down to uh, you know, let's look at Biz QA. We can say this is the role he has and so on. So something to know if you if you have any users that you don't think have any security roles, this is just a good way to check to make sure that all the users in your environment actually at least have the bare minimum to access iTrack or access CRM if that's what they need. And it's a bit different than advanced find because the tables and the columns look different than just exporting it as we did uh, here. This is more of a static report where this is more dynamic. So we're going to on the navigate to reports on the left hand sidebar analysis. We're going to hit the, the new button on the top ribbon, which will open up a pop up. And we're going to name this report. Advanced or webinar. Advanced font. And then on this display area, we want to hover it. And we want to make sure that we have this forms for related record types selected as that will allow you to view the report in the iTrack portal. So once that's done, we're just going to hit save. Sorry, we're going to hit this report wizard button here. We're going to start a new report. We're going to hit next. We're going to name it webinar advanced find advanced find report. Give it a description of forms created by CASM or on 2020. Must include cause analysis. And we're going to name the pr primary record type to forms. And we have the related record type be form cause analysis items as we did in advanced find. We're going to hit next. We're going to see if you have any filters. So we're going to say, you know, for form cause analysis items, we just want the form cause analysis item to contain data. And for the forms, we're just going to head over to our webinar advanced find view. We're actually going to clear all this out actually, because we see here at the bottom in the form section that once we use the same view of webinar advanced find, that our entire advanced find query actually imported with this form cause analysis item section as well. We're going to select next. On here, click to add grouping. We're going to group this by 
forms and by form number or form type. So we can see what kind of forms are submitted per form type. And in the columns, we're going to click open it. We're going to use the record type form to see created on. That's something that's important to us. We're going to look at created by. And we're going to look at form number. Now, once I see here, I'm like, you know what? I'd rather have form number at the beginning of the columns. We're just going to left click this little arrow here. What that does is now when you export it, it will tell you form number created on and created by. If you need to add a column or grouping, you can use this. If you want to remove it, you can use this one. And then if you need to sort, just like advanced find, you'll hit this configure sorting button, which I want to sort by form number ascendant. Next, we're going to hit next. It'll ask you if you want to make a table or a chart and table. We just, I highly suggest using table only. It just makes it simple when it comes to dealing with text. We'll hit next. We'll hit next one more time. And then we see that the report was successfully created. So once we hit finish, we see how this now changed a little bit. And the main thing that is now you can actually run the report here on the top right. So once we hit run report, you can see here that the filters, if you want to edit them, are on the top left. We can change anything we wanted to change uh, dynamically here. But if we report return to the report, we can see here that uh, the incident is grouped up here, the mining incident is grouped up here, and so on and so forth. Now, let's say you made a mistake in adding this form cause analysis item section and you only really wanted it to include the form section. If you return to the report, hit cancel, and if you hit the report wizard here, we can see here that we can start from our existing report, and overwrite it, hit next, and then we can make any sort of changes we want. So here I will delete the, delete the related record type. You know, make sure the use saved view is proper. We'll add our grouping one more time. Form number. Hit next. Hit table only. And this will actually just update and overwrite the existing report instead of creating multiple reports um, based on an error or an edit you wanted to make with the report. So once I hit run report now, we can see here that we have that seven that we spoke about as that related record type was causing an issue before. And it's grouped by incident, mining, non conformance, and webinar, like we did earlier. And from there, if you wanted to either print this, we can hit this print button up here, or if you wanted to export it, we hit this little floppy disk icon, and we have a bit more options exporting into PDF, PowerPoint, and much more. Now that scratches the surface with, um, with the reports. There's a lot more you can do with it, but uh, we also suggest moving all of, a lot of these reports to Power BI. That way you don't have to use the report wizard every time, and we can just get your data seamlessly refreshing, um, whether every day, every hour, at every lunch hour, and it just really keeps your data in your hands. And finally, the last thing I want to show you is we're going to go into our iTrack portal. We're going to go to the form section on the left-hand side. We're going to hit reports. And we see here that we have a bunch of out of box reports that we can pull out. And now we have our webinar advanced find report. Right, it says the description here forms created by CASA around 2020 must include cause analysis. We'll hit run report. And it pulls up the same option we did last time on the bottom right when we hit run report. The report runs through our portal as well. Uh, there will there is a security rule called iTrack support that usually comes out of box that you have to provide the users with for them to see it. And if you're watching this webinar and see that you don't have this, but you think it'd be beneficial, just please speak to your iTrack administrator at your company and they can probably set you up with the rights to use the reports feature. So that is all for the webinar. If you guys do have any emails, please leave a comment below in the YouTube video or email 
support at support at itrack365.com. Thank you and have a great day.